This is the future. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Warframe video. Today I want to talk about damage attenuation and how one weapon can defy this fuck up sort of enemy damage mitigation in Warframe. For those new players in the game, let me explain how damage attenuation works first and how you can deal with it like a pro. Some enemies in Warframe, including bosses such as Archons and the Fragmented One bosses, feature distinctive damage mitigation computations distinct from armor or other forms of pure damage reduction. Typically, this unique mitigation scales with the weapon average damage per second, particularly its burst DPS, occasionally excluding critical hits. Officially, this is termed adaptive damage scaling, scaling damage reduction, or damage attenuation. The game calculates DPS typically using this formula where damage, critical multiplier, fire rate, or attack speed, and multi-shot is calculated after mods and buffs are applied like Octavia's Amp or Volt's Shock Trooper for damage, sharpened bullets for critical multiplier, Valkyr's Warcry or Gauss's Redline for fire rate or attack speed, and split flights for multi-shot. To make it short damage attenuation is like a layer of adaptation for enemies implemented by digital extremes to prevent players from one-shotting their precious new boss fights in the game. Damage attenuation isn't inherently detrimental as it enables content to remain engaging and pertinent across various power levels, while still ensuring that increased power provides an advantage in combat, albeit a lesser one. Fights maintain an appropriate duration as determined by the damage attenuation formula. The issues players encounter stem from peculiarities in its calculation, Excluding reload speed and magazine size from the equation represents a simplistic approach to DPS calculations that doesn't accurately reflect true damage per second. Additionally, fire rate disproportionately impacts the damage attenuation calculation compared to its practical significance, and integrating body part damage into the calculation discourages the use of high DPS weapons aimed at specific body parts, contradicting the aim of creating engaging, mechanics-based boss fights. There are also instances wherein boss fights take longer than usual, like Archon Hunt would go for 20 minutes or more if players don't know about this damage attenuation mechanic or don't have the necessary stat priority to kill the boss quickly. This duration likely differs from the intended length of most other missions in the game, such as sorties or steel path incursions, which typically last around 5 minutes or less. There are other damage attenuation examples in the game that are well received by the community though, and this includes the Demolist units and also the Nox units, who receive a bonus amplification on weak spots. Honestly, at first, I wish that damage attenuation was this easy, but I don't have a say in it as Digital Extremes have the final decision and they know their game better than me. All in all, to beat damage attenuation, you should prioritize first weapon damage, multi-shot, fire rate, and body part multiplier. On the other hand, stats like critical chance, critical multiplier, enemy armor type and value, reload speed, magazine size, and certain damage amplification debuffs perform as normal. If your crit chance is 100% and you have a 2 times critical damage multiplier, then your damage is doubled. If the enemy enemy armor type is weak to your element by 75%, then you do 75% more damage. And if the enemy is susceptible to certain damage amplification debuffs, such as Nova's Molecular Prime or Banshee Sonar, then those amplifications will increase your damage independent of damage attenuation. Notably, the damage attenuation calculation does not include reload speed nor magazine size despite being a burst DPS. Calculations so weapons with high burst DPS due to fire rate or damage but terrible damage uptime due to slow reloading or small magazine size will perform worse than weapons with high damage uptime. Lastly, other sources of damage reduction are not part of damage attenuation. Enemies with innate damage reduction still receive their benefits as well as gaining more damage reduction from their armor value unless they are stripped away of their defense. While this is not the weapon we will mainly talk about in this video, I would just like to include here the best combination that you can use to beat damage attenuation, and that is Zata's Whisper with the Incarnate Ceramic Dagger called the Latum. The Incarnate Pistol has a decent fire rate and high damage thanks to its evolution 5 perk called Devouring Attrition. Zata's Whisper has a unique interaction with the Incarnate Evolution's Devouring Attrition and Devastating Attrition which gives a 50% chance for 2000% damage on a non-critical hit. If your Zata's Whisper is a 50% buff, the way it works is it creates a second hit for 50% of the total damage of its progenitor hit. If Attrition activates on that hit, it will inherit the 2000% bonus damage. This hit then also has its chance to proc Attrition, as Zata's Whisper hits are always non-crits 
This double dipping ends up as a 441 times damage buff on the Seda's Whisper hit. Even if the progenitor hit didn't proc attrition, the Seda's Whisper hit still maintains its chance to activate. This provides a better overall damage buff than Roar or Eclipse, especially if your power strength is on the lower end. You will end up dealing more damage per hit with this combination, and you can melt enemies like they are made of butter. This includes enemies with damage attenuation such as the Archons and the Eferville fragmented boss and the new whispers in the walls update. This is my usual latent build against steel path missions and bosses with damage attenuation. Boss fights in this game are commonly weak against radiation and the incarnate pistol has innate radiation on its mini area of effect shots. Because of this, I go with corrosive and heat and the best part is that I managed to roll a good negative critical chance ribbon on this pistol which allows me to proc the devouring attrition perk of the pistol more often. Speaking of the perks, I have negative weapon recoil in the second evolution, the lethal rearmament in its third evolution, the elemental excess on its fourth to further lower the critical chance. And lastly, of course, the devouring attrition perk. The only thing I don't like about Laytomb during the recent Operation Gargoyles Cry event, wherein you can farm all the arcanes by beating up the Steel Path fragmented boss, is that I need to build up the incarnate form using headshots. Well, it, this is just a skill issue, and I bet that you are not experiencing it, but it's annoying to wait sometimes for the boss to reveal its weak spot so I can build up the incarnate meter again to activate its evolved form. This is why I tried other weapons in set up for this and I found the Incarnum Prisma Angstrom superb in terms of beating the damage attenuation of the fragmented boss. Latum has a very slight advantage over the Incarnum Prisma Angstrom just because of its devouring attrition perk, but it also melts the health of the boss, and it also does well in Archon Hunts or even in normal Steel Path missions. Obviously, we will be using the Prisma variant of this pistol because it has higher stat values compared to the vanilla variant. The only problem is you can only acquire it from other players right now by purchasing it with Platinum, as the only way to get it without spending is from the Void Trader. It's not a good time to buy it now from other players though, as the price of a single Prisma, Angstrom ranges from 500 to 700 Platinum on average. If you have lots of Platinum, then go ahead and purchase it if you want as it's one of the best pistols in the game with Incarnate Form. But if you are saving Platinum, then I highly suggest that you wait for the Void Trader to sell it and just farm the Incarnate Form of this weapon this week in the Steel Path Duvery circuit. So why is it that pricey in the market? It's because the Incarnate Form of of the pistol melts steel path enemies easily with the right build, and it's one of those weapons that are best against bosses that have damage attenuation. The normal variant of the Prisma Angstrom is a rocket pistol that shoots area of effect projectiles. While the damage is decent against enemies within the normal star chart, the damage falls off against steel path enemies, especially if you don't strip their defenses. But it got super busted when its incarnate form was released. The incarnate form becomes fully automatic and shoots small fireballs that deal pure heat damage. Upon hitting an enemy, the projectile will ricochet toward one enemy within 20 meters of the initial target. This ricochet has no homing capability and can miss. Projectiles that hit a surface can bounce up to two times before dissipating on the third impact, but these ricochets do not automatically aim toward enemies. And get this, you don't need to do a headshot to charge up the incarnate form. Instead, you only need to directly hit the enemy with its nuke attack to fill up the bar and activate the incarnate form. While the Prisma Angstrom has poor ammunition economy, this is not a problem as you only use the normal shot to charge up the incarnate form. Then and instead of drawing ammunition from its reserves, the Angstrom's incarnate form uses a separate magazine, with each charge producing 40 rounds to a maximum of 120 once all ammunition is expended, the Angstrom reverts to its normal form, but you can then easily switch back to incarnate form with one or two direct hits to the enemies. Another thing that is great about this pistol is it has a good Riven disposition that you can get Riven mods with stats like this. By the way, this is my usual builds for Incarnon Prisma Angstrom when I have Nourish as a subsumable in my Warframe. Let's take for example my Wisp Prime. I have Nourish in my build, and I also have the Haste Motes, which drastically increases the fire rate of my Prisma Angstrom. With this build, Viral and my Pistol, that will deal huge damage to the health of enemies. Then, I can remove their armor with the Corrosive Prox, plus the two Emerald Archon Shards in my build. And lastly, I added Heat, which is not necessary as the Incarnate Form will deal heat damage, but I prefer adding it to increase the heat stat in my build and get the 480% damage buff from the Cascadia Flare Arcane. The same goes with my Gauss Prime. Now I know many will hate me for building my Gauss Prime this way as replacing Thermal Sunder with Nourish is a bad decision, but don't worry as I'm not a total noob and I got a separate build for a Nuker Gauss whenever I feel erasing enemies in a room within an instance. But for this build, I call it a Weapon Master Gauss Prime build simply because I made this specifically for the fire rate buff of Redline to increase the effectiveness of some of my guns. Then, the only thing I need is survivability which can be obtained using this mod setup and I can enjoy my Gauss Prime using
using this setup, which can also replicate what I have with my Wish Prime. For setups that don't have Nourish in their build, then I highly advise modding for viral and heat and radiation. While it's not needed, having arcane velocity in your Warframe will greatly improve the Incarnate Prisma Angstrom, especially if you have no fire rate mods in your build. There are other fun synergies for this pistol, like Chroma that can buff the weapon damage, or even a defense stripping setup such as Pillage Hildring. These setups can also make the Incarnate Prisma Angstrom super busted and super fun to use, not only in steel path levels, but also destroying bosses with damage attenuation. As I have said, Prisma Angstrom may not be the best, but it's always good to have variety in the game and not just rely on one setup to kill them all. Lastly, let's talk about the evolutions I have for the Incarnate Prisma Angstrom. For its second evolution, I picked the Paladin's Virtue since most of the Warframe I play can go over 700 energy easily with Prime Flow, and this gives me that slight boost in critical damage. On its third evolution, I prefer the Reload Speed Buff as it helps in filling up the Incarnate form, especially if I miss the first shot. And lastly, I go for Critical Parallel for the fourth evolution because of the added critical chance and critical damage. So that's all about it. I hope that you have learned something from this video, and I hope to see you again in my next Warframe guide. Thank you so much for watching. Squad Leader signing off. This is the future.